Good afternoon, it's Tuesday, April 23rd, 2025. In this video, we got breaking news to share with you all as there is a potential for a severe weather outbreak on Monday and Tuesday next week across portions of the upper Midwest and the Midwest. The potential for strong tornadoes, damaging wind gusts, and very large hail is also a possibility with any storms that do develop. So in this video, we will be breaking down all those details. Now, before we do talk about Monday and Tuesday next week, it is a good idea that we do focus briefly on today's severe weather threat across western Texas, western Oklahoma, much of Kansas, and southern Nebraska, as the Storm Prediction Center has maintained a slight risk for severe weather today. This is mainly driven by large hail and damaging wind gusts, but it is also driven by a small 5% risk for tornadoes. This is primarily across far western Kansas and northernmost portion there of the panhandle of Oklahoma. Surrounded by that, there's a small 2% risk for tornadoes across southwestern Texas. And as you can see, there is a 15% risk for damaging wind gusts exceeding 60 miles an hour across far western Texas, western Oklahoma, into much of Kansas and southern Nebraska, with also a risk for quarter-sized hail or larger in the slight risk areas. This goes all the way from southwestern Texas into western Oklahoma into central Kansas, with a 5% risk for large hail for the southeast and also for Michigan and southern Wisconsin. Now, when we time this out on our composite reflectivity forecast on our HRRR model, which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh, this is a simulation of the radar. And what we see here is some showers and thunderstorms that pop off across southwestern Texas this afternoon due to surface heating. We have drier air and drier air warms up much faster than moist air, and what we end up getting is a lot of convection out of this for southwestern Texas near Fort Stockton. This continues throughout the evening hours and overnight hours tonight with showers popping up here over Kansas City. Far western Kansas got some showers and thunderstorms here near um, Fort Dodge, that is. And then we got storms out of this in western Texas as well as Louisiana and Mississippi. Now going forward here, those storms will eventually fall apart here. The ones that are over Kansas will just kind of disintegrate due to capping, due to st stability issues. And so those storms do kind of just kind of dissipate. But these storms over here in far western Kansas will be the storms to watch. Those will be the overnight storms that do pose a threat for some large hail and damaging wind gusts, perhaps 60 miles an hour or stronger, with storms remaining over here throughout the overnight hours, throughout the morning hours tomorrow. Now, as we look at our extended forecast here on our 12Z output from the HRRR model, let's go to that. You can see storms do continue to progress further southeast here into northeastern and central Oklahoma throughout the afternoon hours tomorrow. So this would be right around, say, 3 o'clock central daylight time. And this would continue with, again, a resurgence of showers and thunderstorms developing tomorrow, which wouldn't surprise me if the SPC does issue a slight risk for severe weather tomorrow, mainly driven by large hail and damaging wind gusts. But you never know. A tornado cannot be ruled out with some of these storms like we have seen over the last couple of days. But nothing unusual, no severe weather outbreak, just kind of afternoon thunderstorms each and every day here, as you can see. Now, with that being said, it's a good idea that we do address the severe weather event, potentially an outbreak on Monday and Tuesday across the Great Lakes, the Midwest, and even for portions of the Northern Plains. So here's a look at the 500 millibar relative vorticity plot. This is another way of saying where there's lift, where we can analyze the atmosphere above our heads at 18,000 feet. So, and this gives us an idea where our areas of low pressure are actually located. So we have one over the Northeast here that I've circled in black. We have another one over the Intermountain West here such as California and Nevada. This is going to be the system that we are going to be watching closely as it ejects into the northern plains. So putting this into motion here on the GFS model, and this is for the weekend, by the way, the 27th, and this is for the 28th. So this trough moves into the northern plains as we go into Monday afternoon. And the timing of this now 
really is concerning because that means we're going to have enough lift in the atmosphere. We're going to have cyclogenesis taking place. We're going to have southerly winds, and we'll look at that here in a second. And the ingredients are coming together for a pretty substantial threat of severe weather. And speaking of that, here's a look at the those upper level winds here at 18,000 feet. And what we have here is winds anywhere between about 70 to about 80 knots. That's about 80 to 95 miles an hour at that level. That's pretty strong. And there's a lot of lift. You can see falling heights here. You can see the trough is right here. And there's just this ribbon of strong, fast moving air overspreading the warm sector. This combined with um, low level winds that are also going to be increasing as we go into the afternoon and evening hours to around 60 knots or 50 to 60. That's about uh, 60 to 70 miles an hour. That's going to introduce a lot of speed shear and directional shear. And the surface wind here is around 20 to 30 knots. Inner also introducing some very strong low level wind shear as well. Okay, and we have this surface low that's going to be deepening to about 990 millibars. If we actually go back a few frames, you can see that pressure fall just a little bit enough to where we do get some strengthening winds out of the south. And what that's going to introduce is it's going to introduce moisture advection. Look at dew points here. Yeah, dew points in the 60s as far north as northern Minnesota, northern central Wisconsin. You can see where this warm front actually is here. We got the dry line and cold front back over here in Kansas and Oklahoma. And out ahead of this, we have dew points that are even in the mid 60s, mid to upper 60s over this region. And this is going to um, occur underneath very steep mid-level lapse rates. So there's going to be a lot of moisture. There's going to be uh, an EML influence here, somewhat of an EML, and that's going to steep the, our lapse rates here over um, the severe weather risk, primarily from Texas and Oklahoma, as well as into Louisiana, not Louisiana, uh, Missouri, I meant to say, where we have mid-level lapse rates on the order of about 8 to 8.5 degrees Celsius. That is pretty steep, and that's going to contribute to extreme instability, or actually strong to extreme, on the levels there from northern Texas into Oklahoma into Kansas. Look at this, 3,500 joules per kilogram of surface-based instability that advects northward, even into Minnesota and Wisconsin. So it's not just a deep south or, or a Midwest threat here like in Oklahoma or Missouri, but we're also going to see a big severe weather threat materialize perhaps in uh, Minnesota as well as Wisconsin. That on top of very little capping now. So the whole concern here was we might see a little bit of a lid, okay? And this is another way of saying that this prevents thunderstorm convection. That's a good thing. We don't want thunderstorms to become strong to produce hail, wind, and tornadoes. We want a capping inversion unless these storms are elevated. But elevated storms are not as big of a threat as surface-based storms. So in this case, our surface-based convective inhibition, which prevents thunderstorm development, there's just no lid. There's just nothing much here. And when we click a an observed sounding here in central Iowa, let's click that really quick. Yeah, that's a lot of instability. That's very significant there. And let me zoom in so you all can see this. Uh, it's not going to be captured very well. Actually, can I move this? No, I can't. Um, but you get the idea. The instability is there. We have um, very significant hail analog here, four and a half inches in diameter. That's not a surprise given how steep our lapse rates are. So yeah, a big time hail threat and a tornado threat could be a thing with this storm, along to go with significant wind damage as well, perhaps exceeding 70 to 80 miles an hour because of the kinematics that we're seeing there's going to be uh, some level of significant wind damage with these storms if this trend continues. Now, with that in mind, here's a look at the latest SPC categorical outlook here for Monday, April 28th for early next week. Yeah, literally Monday next week, we are seeing a slight risk. There's a 15% highlighted area here all the way from Oklahoma into Kansas, Missouri, 
Iowa, Minnesota, into Wisconsin, as well as northwestern Illinois, far and wet northwestern area there. And when we go into our day, that is day six. This is day seven. Yeah, look at this. There's a slight risk issued all the way from northeastern Texas all the way to Indiana. And we're probably going to add on another slight risk thereafter. So yeah, a very busy early part of next week. And this is well said with some of our climate models that were suggesting that late April would get very active with severe weather. And again, doesn't surprise me here. We could see a severe weather outbreak next week consisting of strong tornadoes, significant wind damage, 60 to 75 to even 80 miles an hour, and the risk also for two to four inch plus hailstone sizes with some of the most intense updrafts. Now, with that being said, if you found this video very helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get all my updates here on the channel when I upload on severe weather, hurricanes such as the tropics, or winter weather during the winter season. Also, ring the bell notification icon, slap that like button, and also leave a comment in the section below this video, folks. Let me know what your thoughts are with the upcoming severe weather threat for Monday and Tuesday next week. All right, let me know down below. And lastly, be sure to check out our Weather Force Discord server. There's a link in the description below this video. And lastly, please vote. I do have a poll going here on the Google Forms site. So that will also be pinned to the chat or to the comment section, also to the description of this video. Please vote on what YouTube channel name you would want me to have with a proposal of a name change in the next uh, in the next six months or a year. But anyways, I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on this severe weather event expected for Monday and Tuesday next week.